What's up guys, welcome to another episode of RBT Resistance Band Training. Now you don't have to be into resistance band training to be interested in what we're gonna talk about today, and that is muscle building or hypertrophy. So let's jump right into it. All right, so when we're talking about building muscle or hypertrophy, what we're really talking about here is protein synthesis. Now you may have heard that term before, but what exactly is it? Well, here's what you need to keep in mind. If you were to take all the fluids out of your muscle, so by dry weight, our muscle is made up of 70% proteins. So the buildup of proteins through protein synthesis is what we call building muscle. Now, the breakdown of muscle proteins is actually what we call being in a catabolic state. And we'll jump into that later, how that happens. But those are the two states. Now, when protein synthesis or the buildup exceeds protein breakdown, that's when we start to talk about building muscle. So now we know that protein synthesis or the buildup of proteins is our goal. So what are those three factors? What are the triggers for protein synthesis? So these are our three M's. Number one, mechanical tension. Number two, metabolic stress. And number three, muscle damage. So let's jump into this. Let's talk about the first one, mechanical tension. All right, so what is mechanical tension? Well, it's simply a force that stretches or pulls a material. In this case, that material is our muscle. So that is the force pulling against our muscle. Now that force can be generated by free weights, it can be generated by machines, by resistance bands, or even by lifting a log or a rock or whatever it is that you wanna lift. Anything that creates a force that opposes our muscles is mechanical tension. Now our muscles can experience mechanical tension in two ways, active tension and passive tension. So what is active tension? Well, in a concentric contraction, an isometric contraction where you hold it, or an eccentric or negative contraction, that is when our muscle has that mechanical tension opposing it during an active contraction. Passive tension is when our muscle is in a relaxed position, we are not contracting, but that force is pulling against our muscles. So that is passive tension. And believe it or not, they found that there's actually muscle building benefits of passive tension, not just active tension. So how exactly does mechanical tension build muscle? Well, the exact process isn't exactly clear to science. They still debate it back and forth. But the one thing that most people agree on is that the mechanical tension actually disturbs the integrity of the muscle, meaning that it stresses the muscle enough to create an adaptation or a reaction, which ends up being triggers for hypertrophy or muscle building. So in other words, the stress to the muscle makes your body react by creating more proteins to make the muscle stronger if there is enough stimulus. Now here's the key doing one heavy rep. So in other words, creating a lot of mechanical tension. So we can lift something really heavy, but if we only do it for one rep, that's not going to be a significant trigger for hypertrophy. Now that can make you stronger, but you have to remember there's a difference between building muscle and getting stronger. All right, so if mechanical tension isn't enough. What is that other factor? Well, that other factor is time under tension, meaning how long are you holding that load? So if we were doing, say, 10 reps with a concentric of one second, an isometric of a second, and an eccentric of two seconds, that would be four seconds per rep of time under tension. Multiplied by our 10 reps, that would give us 40 seconds. That would fall right under our ideal range of 30 to 70 seconds of total time under tension to trigger muscle hypertrophy. So it's not just about a heavier weight, it's also about making sure that you're getting that time under tension. Now, here's a good example of where I see a lot of people go wrong. So they think, okay, I need to do 10 reps. So they go boom, 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 and they get their 10 reps and they put the weight down and say, hey, I got my 10 reps at 75% of my one rep max. I did everything right, wrong because you didn't get the proper time under tension. If I do sloppy reps and I do a one second concentric, I'm not holding it on the isometric, and I do a sloppy eccentric, so I get a second and a second for two seconds per rep, times 10 reps, that's only 20 seconds. Now remember, we need between 30 seconds and 70 seconds of time under tension to trigger hypertrophy. So sloppy reps, are not going to do it if you're not getting the proper amount of time under tension. So I could even do 20 reps as long as I'm falling 
in that 30 to 70 seconds of time under tension, I'm still triggering muscle hypertrophy as long as the load or the mechanical tension is high enough. So now we know that mechanical tension is not solely responsible for triggering hypertrophy or muscle building. It is a component, but it's not the only thing. So what else is missing besides mechanical tension? In other words, we're not gonna get bigger if we just continue to lift heavier and heavier and heavier. There's other factors involved. So what's the second one? Metabolic stress. You've experienced metabolic stress probably and just didn't even know it. Anytime you're getting a pump or you're feeling that burning in your muscles that you call lactic acid, which is not lactic acid by the way, and we'll jump into that, but that burning sensation or that pump, that is metabolic stress and this is our second trigger for protein synthesis or muscle hypertrophy. All right, so what exactly is metabolic stress? Well, here's the simple breakdown. Under normal circumstances, when our muscles have plenty of energy and oxygen, they work aerobically. In short bursts, meaning one to three minutes of high intensity exercise like HIIT or with lifting weights, our muscles start to work anaerobically. And this is because of a lack of oxygen. They can't get enough oxygen to work aerobically. So your body uses a different energy pathway and it starts to use glucose and break that down through a process. And one of the byproducts of that process is lactate and other metabolites. And they start to build up within the muscle cell. This alone starts to cause cell swelling, what we call a muscle pump. Now more blood flow comes into the muscle to help flush out that lactate and those other metabolites, and this too contributes to the pump. Now the burning sensation that you feel is not lactic acid, and this is where there's like a simple confusion between lactate and lactic acid. So this combination of lactate, plus high acidity equals lactic acidosis. And that's where this confusion of lactic acid comes in. It's not lactic acid, it's lactic acidosis. And it's a buildup, like I said, of lactate and high acidity levels. And so this is that pump that we feel, and this is the burn we feel. And this, just like mechanical tension, is a trigger for protein synthesis. So Arnold Schwarzenegger, when he was talking about the pump and pumping iron, the importance of getting a pump, he actually was right on point because the pump is a critical factor for building muscle. But I want to address one thing because this is important with the popularity of very, very low carb diets or keto diets right now. Now think about what I said when we're talking about not being in an aerobic state, but being in an anaerobic state, meaning that our body is now going to burn glucose as a source of fuel. So in a keto diet or a low carb diet, we have depleted our glycogen stores, meaning our body's stores of glucose. So if we don't have any glucose for our body to use during high intensity exercise, what's it gonna do? What it's going to do is take your muscle proteins, break it down into amino acids and break those amino acids or convert them into glucose. And this is called being catabolic. This is the breakdown of muscle protein. This is the opposite of what we talked about in the very beginning. Remember, we want to talk about the buildup of muscle proteins, not the breakdown. So this is being catabolic. And that's why a keto diet is great for burning fat, but it is not great for building muscle. Okay, so what's gonna trigger metabolic stress? Well, the first one's actually very interesting. It's a popular topic right now. If you guys have heard of occlusion training, you see people wrapping the straps around their biceps, that's occlusion training, meaning you're actually restricting the oxygen coming into the muscle. Remember we talked about going from an aerobic state to an anaerobic state, what triggers that? Well, it's a lack of oxygen. So occlusion training is actually artificially triggering that. Well, the interesting thing is we can trigger the same thing with a good old fashioned pump. So during training, when you really start to get that pump, you start to get an occlusion effect, meaning that the veins that are carrying the blood out of the muscle are restricted because they become compressed from all these fluids, the buildup of fluids in there. So they become compressed. So you don't get as much blood flow out yet the arteries that are bringing blood into the muscle continue because they're much stronger. They continue to push blood into the muscle. So you start to get this pump effect, not enough blood going out, a lot of blood going in. So this is occlusion training in its simplest form. 
So you don't need to actually wrap the straps around your arms to get the benefits of occlusion training. You actually just need to train the right way. So what exactly is the right way? Well, one, you need to make sure you have the right volume. I'm sure you've experienced this before. If I did five or six reps, I'm not gonna get enough pump. So volume is a key factor here and fatigue is a key factor. What are some other triggers for metabolic stress? Well, like I said, is that lack of oxygen to the muscle. So your high intensity exercise by itself, going in there and training really hard, triggering anaerobic glycolysis, that too is a trigger for metabolic stress the lactate that starts to build up as a byproduct. So the lactate and the other metabolites, those are a trigger. So all three of those things are contributing to metabolic stress. So what exactly is going to do that? Well, it's making sure you're training the right way. If you go into the gym and you do six reps, it may be really heavy. There may be a lot of mechanical uh, tension or mechanical load there, but there's not enough reps, not enough volume, not enough fatigue in order to get that good pump and therefore metabolic stress. So you need to have enough volume. Now the way you train is important as well. When the muscle is in the peak contraction or in the most shortened phase of the contraction, that's when occlusion happens the most. In other words, there's the most pump. So you wanna make sure that you have as much resistance at the top of the range of motion as possible. That's why your isometric squeeze is so important. So anytime you see people rushing those reps, you're missing out on some of the muscle building benefit. So make sure you really squeeze at the top, make sure you get good resistance at the top. One of the exercises for biceps, if I were using regular weights, one of the exercises that's great for getting a pump is actually doing preacher curls. Why is that? Well, because we're leaning out in front of us and that way when we curl up, we still have good tension at the top of the range of motion as opposed to standing up where I'm kind of locked out here. But coming forward, say with preacher curls or even on a bench doing spider curls, we have tension all the way to the very top and that's what you want. You want a peak contraction there and that's really gonna help you get that good pump. That's why I like training with resistance bands. I have resistance all the way through the range of motion at the top where I'm the strongest, I happen to have the most resistance using resistance bands. And that's why bands are great for getting a pump. This is why you see bodybuilders using resistance bands backstage at competitions to pump up because they're great for that. Matter of fact, I think they're superior to weights when it comes to the pump. So metabolic stress is a key factor for building muscle. So it's not just about mechanical tension, it's about metabolic stress as well. Now this leads us to number three on our list, which is muscle damage. I think we've all experienced muscle damage when we were first started working out. We went in and we got that really hard leg workout and then we were so sore we couldn't even sit on the toilet for like five days. That's muscle damage. So basically when we work out, there's micro trauma to a muscle that causes inflammation. That inflammation is a response to the damage that's caused to the muscle during working out. Now we've all heard the saying that no pain, no gain. In other words, that that muscle damage is necessary for building muscle. And this is partially true, not completely true, but partially true. Here's why. When we're talking about triggering protein synthesis and we talk about this example of the building blocks of the muscle. So imagine if we have building blocks here, literally almost like if these were Legos. This is, imagine this is protein synthesis. So we're building up layers of protein here, making our muscles bigger. Now. Muscle damage, so trauma to the muscle during exercise does trigger protein synthesis. Here's the challenge though, all protein synthesis does not go to building muscle. What if I told you that we were to create some trauma here, so this piece, this block is now damaged. We went in there and we overtrained, we worked too hard, so this is damaged now and we only had a finite amount of protein synthesis. So for example, we'll just use two blocks here. Well, now our two blocks aren't going towards muscle building. One of those blocks is now coming over here for muscle repair. And we'll add the other one here. So there is some, assuming we didn't overtrain too much, there is some muscle building here. But the point being, that all protein synthesis does not go just towards building, some of it goes towards repair. So there is such a thing 
as stimulating muscle growth with just enough micro damage, a slight amount, but not going in there and overtraining and destroying the muscle where all of our resources, meaning all of our protein synthesis is going just towards repairing, towards fixing. So more is not always better. So just remember that, that we want to stimulate, not annihilate. That's a saying that's been around for a long time and there's a lot of truth to that one. So when it comes to muscle damage, how do we stimulate muscle damage? What is one of the tools in our arsenal? Well, the best one that we have is eccentric training. So what does that mean? That means negatives. You see people going in there and they've got a spotter, someone helping them up on the concentric and then they do the eccentric portion of it. So why is that so beneficial? Well, the first thing is that we are 20 to 30% stronger in an eccentric contraction than we are a concentric. So meaning that if a spotter helps us up, we can control that on the way down even if we can't do it concentrically. So in other words, more load or more uh, mechanical tension equals potentially greater muscle damage during those reps. The other thing about eccentric training is that as we're doing an eccentric contraction, the muscle is lengthening. So we are resisting that either the weight or the tension created by the band, doesn't matter what it is, whatever that mechanical tension, we're resisting that and the muscle is stretching. And they found that muscle damage is greater when our muscle is in an elongated position. Remember in the beginning I was talking about a passive tension as opposed to active tension, meaning that if the, the muscle is just stretched by that mechanical tension that there's muscle building benefits. Well, the same thing holds true with eccentric training. So the nice thing about eccentric training is there's not as much buildup of metabolites like lactate when you're doing eccentric training. So you could do more of these without getting that fatigue and getting that crazy pump and getting that burn. So that is the benefit of doing eccentric training for muscle damage. Okay, so mechanical tension, metabolic stress, muscle damage. How do the three of these work together? What is that perfect formula? 